and uh, I think we said the last night we're doing a wee study, God willing, uh, for a number of months anyway. We're sort of laying out over the next 12 months and one of them, one of them down is the second night and we're going to look at Thoughts from Thessalonians. That's not a very big title but Thoughts from Thessalonians and there's so many thoughts really we can have from that, from God's word that can be practical. It's a, it's a first century church but there's so much application mm. for the 21st century. In fact, so many people would say that the conditions of the first century, uh, technology-wise, have moved ahead, but the conditions and the atmosphere is very similar indeed to the generation that uh, we live here in the 21st century. So, uh, good to be back and uh, to have our second thought, uh, study on thoughts from Thessalonians. Now, as discussed earlier, our Bible reading is from... And those that use the church Bible, it will be on page uh, 1691, as John has outlined. And we'll read that today. Apologies. Uh, we'll read the first chapter together, which is just 10 verses. And I just want to mm. re read a few other verses to link in our thoughts for tonight. And this is God's Word. That's First Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father... And the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labour of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For the gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know, what kind of men we were among you, for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you may come examples, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord was sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of answer we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and through God, and to wait for the, his Son from heaven, he may raise from the dead even Jesus Christ who delivers us from the wrath to come. Now just a few other wee verses. We're going to turn over to chapter 3 and uh, we'll come to that chapter 3 and verse 1. Therefore when we could no longer endure it we thought it good to be left uh, in Athens alone. And Saint Timothy our brother and minister of God and our fellow labourer in the gospel to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. And then verse 6 of chapter 3 says, But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love, and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us, as we also to see you. And my last reading, just to make the link, is back in Acts. Uh, we're aware of the last week, Acts chapter 18. And verses 1 and verses 5, that's uh, Acts 18, verse 1 and verse, verse 5. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And then verse 5, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the, Jew, the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. And we know that God, as always, will bless the public reading of his own precious word. Now, uh, we're having thoughts from Thessalonians, and last week we really looked at the foundation of the church, how it was formed, how it, in modern day, how the church was planted, and it was in the second missionary journey of Paul mm. and Silas, and you know the whole story there, went into the last time, how uh, Paul and Barnabas split at that point, and, and then... Uh, Paul selected Silas and they started their missionary journey going around the churches of the first missionary journey. They ended up in Lystra and they recruited young Timothy there who 
probably was saved in the first missionary journey and then they travelled on and Paul was going into Asia and then he got the Macedonian call come over here and help us we even applied that to Patrick in our own island many years he heard them again to come to this island to preach the gospel uh, many many years ago and, and Paul it says there we weren't disobedient to the heavenly call and they came into Europe and thank God for that for the gospel came to Europe and as you know they arrived in Philippi and again uh, Lydia was saved the young slave girl was delivered and they ended up in jail <laughs> and they had a, had a prayer service in jail and uh, then there was an earthquake and God gloriously and wonderfully saved the Philippian jailer and those wonderful words they cried out which is used in many as a gospel setting what must I do to be saved? And the answer still today, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou yeah. shalt be saved. And it would appear household salvation as well. And they were really put out of town mm. there and they were persecuted. And they made their way, which was about 100 miles, to Thessalonica. And there again they started preaching in the synagogue and uh, on, the, on the Sabbath day. They done three Sabbaths. Now, some say they're only three weeks. Most scholars would say there could be three months, maximum six months, but it says in scripture three Sabbath days and then they were in Jason's house, but a church was formed there. There was Jews saved, there was Greeks saved, and there were some of the leading women came to know the Lord. And that's where we really left it off last week and all the application. And we thought a wee bit about the verse, you know, these that have turned the world upside down have came hither. What did they do to turn the world upside down? Well, they just preached the gospel. They preached Christ. They preached the cross. They preached how the Lord Jesus was the Messiah of the Old Testament and how he came and died for them to save them. And some believed and some didn't. And these men were gospel preachers who were true to the scriptures. They reasoned out of the scriptures. They talked out of the scripture. And the people heard the scriptures and hasn't changed today I believe we want to turn Mullingar upside down we need to be applicable uh, for today's generation but we must stick to the scriptures we must preach the scriptures we must preach the gospel it's the power of God unto salvation and we started the cross and in simple terms the way of the cross leads home there's no other way but this and it's the message of salvation it's not gimmicks and yes, certainly to get the gospel, there are many methods and means, but the message never changes. And that's what those guys, how they turned the world upside down. And because of it, lives were changed. And people could see it. And it didn't suit the people. And actually, in reality, they turned the world the right way up. And because of, again, persecution in Thessalonica, Jason agreed that these guys would basically leave town. And they moved on to Berea. And there they preached the gospel again and some of the Thessalonian Jews came down and had a disturbance there and Paul had to leave town again. And he was sent off to Athens and he basically said, you know, as soon as possible, send uh, Silas and send uh, Timothy to join us. And that happened. And we know how uh, a tremendous chapter of the word of God, again, how Paul... Uh, it was fit, fit a debate in, 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 in Athens and at Mars Hill and all of that. It would appear there wasn't much results, but there were souls saved. If you read that at record. And then, as we read in your hearing, Paul, uh, Silas and Timothy then joined Paul in Athens. And as he was there, he was thinking, you know, we hadn't been long in Philippi. We haven't been long in Thessalonica. A young church, young believers, not much teaching and he sent uh, Paul, or he sent Silas, and he sent Timothy back to those churches to see how they were getting on, to instruct them more in the things of God. And it's most likely that Silas went to the Philippi church, and definitely, and uh, reading the night, we know that Timothy definitely went to the church at Thessalonica. In the meantime, Paul moves on to Corinth. And he had a tremendous ministry in Corinth. Again, a very difficult city. A godless city. And yet the Lord appeared to him and said, You have many people in this city. And while Paul was in Corinth, then finally, probably six months later, probably through the winter, I think it was in AD 51, Silas and Timothy arrive and join up with uh, Paul again. And Timothy 
brings a tremendous report. He could tell them, you see the believers in Thessalonica, who have gone on with God. And uh, uh, Paul was just absolutely delighted. It's great to know anybody at Plants Church just to be fit to go back and just to see people that came to know the Lord and to see them going on with God. To see that the work of redemption had took place, that lives were changed, that hearts were changed, that people were genuinely saved and born again. And, and, and to bring that back and to say, you know, you see that church, even under affliction, even under persecution, even in a, different, a difficult area, they're still going on. With God. I'm going to even say in Mullingar, I'm sure there are many difficulties, I'm sure there are many setbacks, but it's great to come down and to see people going on with God. To see people who are faithful, who are there in the good time, are there in the difficult times, are there when the numbers are down, and are there when the numbers are up, but going on and going through with God and have a, a, an assembly or a church planted and to see the people. And as a result of Timothy's discussion, and there may have been a letter came from the Thessalonians to, to Paul, as a result of that, Paul then wrote this letter for Thessalonians. And it's thought only in a matter of weeks again, after that, he wrote the second letter, which we'll, God willing, uh, maybe next year get to if the Lord tarries and spares life and wrote the second letter. And it is also thought that these two letters are probably the first two letters that Paul wrote. Galatians may have been before that and probably was, but it's possible. And you know, I was looking up some of the, uh, the different uh, commentators on it. And these were some of the first letters, I say, that, that Paul written, had written. And you might wonder, you know, oh, why was Paul thrown out of Thessalonica? I'm sure Paul was thinking, that's terrible, I had to move on quick. But it brought Paul to his pen. And that pen has been with us for nearly 2,000 years. We wouldn't have had first and, Thess first and second Thessalonians to teach us in many things of God and teachings that we need to know in Scripture. Had it not been that he had been thrown out of Thessalonica, if it hadn't been that persecution. And the only way Paul could really communicate that was by writing a letter to them. Of course, inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is the Word of God, is the truth of God, and we can come to it as the teaching of uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. But you see, sometimes we think circumstances in the life, why, why did it happen that way? But God is a way in front of us. And we have for over 2,000 years to instruct the church these wonderful letters that we're looking at tonight. So it's just absolutely wonderful. Charles Ryle said about this, he said, Although penned so early, these epistles in no way reflect on uh, reflect undeveloped, immature teaching. For Paul had been a Christian for 17 or 18 years by the time he wrote First and Second Thessalonians. And he'd been a missionary for 7 or 8 years. His theology was fully developed in his mind and tested in experience. Yeah. 